So I was going to do an unboxing video, but we kind of just got ahead of ourselves. But here are the two batteries. Uh, each one of them is 8.4 kilowatts, so in total is 16.8 kilowatt hour battery. This is the back end of the batteries. And let's go around to the front here. And so the negative terminal is towards the front, which is good because that's where the rocker switches are as well. So to turn it on, you just flip the switch to on and press the button, and then the contactor kicks on. And to turn it off, you just switch it to the off position. And then uh, the nice thing is, what I'm really excited to install with these is that when the batteries are off, there's no voltage drop, so it's pretty safe to work with them. Uh, a little bit safer than the lead acid. And then there's a sh the shunt connection there uh, for the battery monitor. And so the bodies are identical. And then uh, if we kind of take a look back here, this is what else came with the kit is we have uh, a few a one-odd uh, tinned copper uh, connectors here and then we've got the special one with the, the shunt box in it and a little two pin power monitor connection that plugs into the front of the battery and then more or less like a telephone cable I think it's an RJ45 that goes to the the dash that we'll put in place for the Victron 712 uh, Bluetooth battery monitor. My uh, first plan here was to give the Ranger a bit of a wash down generally, uh, but in particular uh, applying baking soda to the tops of the lead acid batteries to neutralize the sulfuric acid and then wash all the batteries so they'll be nice to deal with. The plan for me now is um, I'm going to disconnect the MPC, the main power connector, which is right, uh, right in here. And then I'm going to disconnect that Anderson plug. That's uh, something I put in uh, when I had some issues. And then after that, uh, I'm going to disconnect the positive terminal on that battery back there, on the back driver's side, then remove all of the positive connections on all eight batteries and all the negative connectors. Then, then after that, or maybe before actually, is uh, I'm going to remove the rear inner panel here, inner fender panel and the side panel here. Then uh, unbolt the battery hold downs, remove the batteries, remove the battery trays and the bottom skip panel. So let's get to it. So because I'm using the OEM charger, there were a few things that were recommended to look at because of the long charge times, the charger and the cable can get quite hot. So one thing is to uh, just double check this cable. So this is the AC power cable. Uh, and it comes out right here on my Ranger anyways. You do want to check that this is a, at least 14 gauge cable uh, and didn't, hadn't gotten replaced with a smaller gauge cable or whatnot. And then also just ensuring the uh, connection, the IEC connection between the charger and that AC cable is good and also sealed. The next thing that was recommended, but I'm not going to do it right now, is this connection right here um, powers the charges the battery. And one could disconnect, uh, remove that disconnect, and just actually put in a butt splice because those pins can overheat. And so putting in a solid connection might be better. Again, I'm not going to do it right now, but we'll keep an eye on keep an eye on it. The last thing to consider for this uh, for this install using the OEM charger is to consider uh, bypassing the uh, charge cable that comes from the uh, charger to the batteries. 
So that runs through the main power connector and then through a 30 amp fuse, which is underneath the contactor. Uh, I did this actually when I had uh, my lead acid batteries installed because it was all pretty hot. And uh, so you can take the feed of the cable, which is just before it hits the MPC, disconnect that, and then I put in uh, an Anderson connection, a red connection back there, uh, which goes to an inline uh, waterproof fuse and then to the contactor. Uh, the contactor bolt is or not as loose right now because I'm just doing the install. You definitely want to make sure that that's tight. Uh, and that's the fuse that I also uh, bypassed there. I'm going to include a drawing to hopefully make this a little bit more clear. So through the magic of video, I've saved you guys having to watch me do this for quite a little while. So batteries were all removed, hold downs were all removed, uh, and uh, I removed the bottom skid plate. My plan now is uh, I'm actually just going to wash the underneath the trays a little bit more. There wasn't too much corrosion, which is great, but I'm going to wash it and let it dry before installing the batteries. One nice thing um, to note after taking this stuff down, and this is, I did monthly maintenance on the Ranger here, and uh, so that would include putting down baking soda and washing the batteries and topping up the batteries and all that kind of stuff, and yet still, like, look at that corrosion. So I'm looking forward to not having to deal with that. And, like, look at, look at this one. It's, it's, a, it's just a ship. It's not even, there's nothing left. So, it's a, all a bit of a mess. And then, you know, the batteries are just, there's uh, obviously Vaseline on this connection. I had one connection that uh, melted because uh, the bolt came loose in operation and I was able to tap into that lead pad there. Um, but it's nice to not have to, to think about that so much anymore. And, you know, also nice to drop the weight, like each of these batteries, I think, are like 86 pounds a piece. And the new uh, uh, lithium batteries, which I'm installing too, they're 125 pounds a piece. So, you know, over, you know, 650 pounds versus, uh, you know, 250. So. so now that I've got everything removed, I'm going to give it... Uh, a little bit of a, a wash down a little bit further and uh, let's take a look and see how things end up. So after a bit of a cleanup, uh, it looks, I, I'm pretty pleased with how it looks. I thought it was going to be, the frame was going to be more corroded than it was. Uh, the batter, the plastic battery tray inserts, I guess, uh, did their job. So I'm just going to let this dry down before I start doing the install here uh, tomorrow. So with the frame all dry, now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to drill our four bolt points uh, to mount the batteries. So the first thing we're going to do is on the front rail here, this is on the passenger side, we're going to measure back nine and a quarter inches. And using a 5-16 drill bit, we're going to drill uh, straight through that rail. And then if we move to the back, If we move to the back here, we're going to measure back uh, two and three quarter inches from the back, drill a hole there, and then uh, measure a half inch from the uh, uh, frame rail there and drill in the center of that channel uh, on that side and uh, on that side. And so there's actually a bracket underneath here through that hole that you can kind of drill, can't really show it very well, you can drill, drill into. And so the longer, I think it's a four inch uh, by five sixteenth bolt, uh, will go through there and uh, through there on that side.
so it's late at night, and I made two mistakes here. One is I would not install the pre-install the cables. There's enough room to work on it. Um, once it's in, it's tight, and it's really tight for the shunt uh, plug on the passenger side. The second mistake I made here was uh, I hadn't realized that the batteries had slightly different uh, drill patterns on the sides. So this battery is intended for the driver's side, uh, so that's why there's no holes here. Uh, so unfortunately I had to take this guy out and put the other battery while, while we're here, I thought I'd try and throw in the second battery here too, just to see if it was feasible for the battery to fit in. And certainly uh, width-wise, we're pretty good. It does fit. It's tight. Uh, both batteries are pretty tight. Uh, but it does, it does fit is the short answer, which means you could have uh, two 16 8 kilowatt packs, which would be like 33.6, which is a crazy amount of battery. But it is really tight between the back wheel um, and the corner of the battery here. And I have the standard batteries, uh, standard wheels rather. And so you're looking at like uh, two plus inches. And so it'd be fine. Uh, maybe a little bit more of a fringe, fringe use case. That said, I'd still love to Love to try it and see how uh, how far we could go with it, but the sh short answer is it does work. Uh, the side panel fits on okay uh, without a problem. Again, the width isn't the issue, but the length is quite uh, it's quite long. So I think you'd either just have to not put uh, the rear inner fender on, or you'd have to. Um, or, or you just have to try and uh, fabricate something, something, something different. All right. So last thing where I left it was in a couple of different places was that I was going to have to potentially drill holes here, but you know, having a cold and then being uh, a little mentally, s having a cold and not having great mental clarity. Uh, I didn't realize that this uh, battery actually needs to go on the other side because if you look at this one, look at that. There looks to be holes in the right place. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to swap those out and see if we get uh, better, better results. Well, that looks better. That looks quite a bit better, so there's obviously connect. I can stick a bolt through there and a bolt down through Mommy, over here. And then that lines up and that Mommy, lines up. Um, yeah, so got it, uh, all four bolts uh, bolted down here on the inside and the outside. Um, the one thing that I would just note is it would be helpful just to keep an eye on um, providing enough room for this shunt here, the shunt plug. I was a little too tight here, so I had to make one of the holes a little wider just to kind of shimmy it all over, but that's looking good. And then I've got this, the shunt box kind of wired in here. I'm um, gonna have to find a way to secure it here and then the cable runs out the back and up to here. Now, it's it's recommended um, not to use this standoff, but I didn't have a terminal bolt uh, long enough for that to work. Uh, so I just need to tighten up the connector on the other side and then we're on onto the uh, driver's side battery. Okay, so the front half is uh, now wired up. So it is a Parallel 48. Um, I know he also sells, um, or Atlas also sells uh, 24s. So 
uh, for my configuration, this is gonna be a parallel connection. So, so one connector, so this is battery one, even though it's on the passenger side, that's fine. Uh, one connector goes through the shunt and then kind of comes up to the B negative, the ground, I think, here. Uh, and then the other one, uh, there's a second cable here that goes over to this battery here. So that's wired up, actually, you put the boot on. And then we'll do the backside. Okay, so battery one is connected, save for the shunt bit. And I'm going to hook that up um, in a minute. But the negative terminals are all wired up and wired to the controller. Positive side is wired into the top of the contactor there. Let's see if I can... wired into the top side of the contactor there. Nice and snug. And then these guys are wired in um, here and here. So that's nice and snug too. And uh, that's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much it. So aside from idiotic error on my part, that was pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, so just kind of here uh, for the Victron, I just like drew a circle as a template around this. No, this is a perfectly straight, but it should be good. They wanted a 53 mil uh, hole saw. I have a 54, I think. I think it's two and a quarter is what it is. Uh, so I'm just gonna use use that because I don't have anything smaller. Um, and two inches too small. So I took the RJ12, I think, the, like the more or less the telephone cable um, down through here. And then it went under and across. And then it followed this main branch line and you can kind of see it over there. And it goes underneath and <clears throat> I'll show you in a second but um, it, you can take off th this whole thing and run the cable um, through there I kind of tied it to the main main branch line there. and then Comes up right on this side. Let's see if I can get you done with it. Right up here. Right here. Right up here. You can see it coming up here. Boom. Chases across underneath here. Oh, <laughs> I just kind of got this chunk of stuff just strapped here. And then uh, it's all just wired in like that. And just as, uh, as a note while I'm reinstalling these back um, mud guards, I guess. Because I don't have the battery tray still installed, there's no place for these rivets to sit. So this might rattle, it might get annoying. Um, but the other thing that I noticed was it does actually bind right up against the corner of this battery here. <clears throat> but, you know, whatever. All I did was I uh, just took a little saw cut and just nicked, <clears throat> just nicked the corner off of it. And then that sat through, and then, you know, these other rivets all <clears throat> went in. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. 